Hey everyone, this video is actually a follow-up for my color replacement tutorial and this is going to basically show you how to convert a contrast into a color. The reason why the technique I showed you in the last video doesn't work for black or white is because black and white aren't actually colors, they're contrasts and so we have to use a completely different technique in order to be able to change black into red or white into purple or whatever other color you want to convert the contrast to. And uh, so I'm going to try and make this as painless as possible and I'm going to keep this uh, fairly simple. You know, there's not going to be any complex uh, selections to make. So yes, nice and simple like I said. Now as you can see I've got a dark grey t-shirt here and I'm going to make this purple and the reason why I'm going to make it purple is one, because in the last video I believe I changed the apple from green to purple and two, purple is just fantastic. So anyway, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to make a copy of this background layer and the reason why we do this is because if somehow you manage to completely mess up what you're doing, say you permanently color the shirt and you can't undo what you've just done, then it's basically going to be a shitty shambles and you have to start all over again. So what I want you to do is left click the background layer and drag it down onto the new layer icon and there you go, we've got the copy of the background layer. So now that we've got that out of the way, the next thing we need to do is basically select the t-shirt. And the reason why we need to do that is obvious. If we don't, then the white in the background and the white on the label, that's going to become colorized as well. And we don't want that. Our goal is just to change the color of the gray shirt. So now if we go over to the left side of our interface and we click on the magic wand tool, you can also use the hotkey, which is W. Uh, we're ready to create a selection. So basically, go over to any part of the shirt that's grey, so obviously not the label, and click. Then you can see we've made a pretty impressive selection. And it might look as if uh, the label has been selected as well, but that's actually showing you that it's being excluded right there. The selection that we've made uh, is obviously just around the edges of the shirt. So that might cause you a little bit of confusion at first, but um, it is not part of the selection. Next, we're going to make an adjustment layer. So if you go over to the right side of the interface this time, and click on the hue slash saturation icon, as you can see, it's made our adjustment layer, and because of our selection, it's in the shape of the t-shirt. So that's all we're going to affect when we change the sliders around on the properties menu. So now it's time to actually change the colors. The first thing that we're going to do in this properties menu is check the colorize checkbox. As you can see, it's already added some color to the contrast and this is definitely the most important part no matter what you do to the sliders if the colorize checkbox isn't ticked it's not going to add color to it at all it'll change the lightness but it will not change the color or rather add a color to it so now if we want to make it purple the first thing that we can do is slide the hue slider across over to purple, obviously, and that looks that looks okay. One thing to bear in mind is that if you add too much saturation, it's probably not going to look realistic. It's probably going to hurt your eyes like it's hurting mine right now, and not look convincing. So it's best to sort of ease off on that slider, and really the same thing with lightness. I mean, look, when we increase the lightness that much, it almost looks like a kind of vectorized graphic. I mean, it doesn't it doesn't look like a real t-shirt anymore. It looks like a, well, a vector graphic, as I just said. So just 
bear that in mind and go easy on the saturation and the lightness sliders. I'm not saying to not use them at all, I'm just saying that it's very easy to go overboard and end up with something that's not the least bit convincing. As far as the technique is concerned, that's basically it. So I, I hope you've followed along and you haven't run into any problems. If you have, you can feel free to leave a comment or message me and I'll make sure that I get back to you about it. The reason why I made this video is actually because I received a lot of messages both on the last video and also in my inbox saying it doesn't work on black and white, the previous technique doesn't work on contrast. So that's the reason for this video, and if there are any other videos along these lines that you'd like to see, then feel free to drop me a line and I'll see what I can do. Um, obviously the selection that I made in this was very simple, I mean it was a fairly solid grey, which made using the magic wand tool incredibly easy. Obviously if you've got a photo, uh, say a family photo, and you've got a lot going on in it, it's not going to be as easy as that to select an item of clothing. And the more light that's shining off the clothing, the harder it's going to be to do this. So you'll, realistically, you'll have to use the pen tool to make a more detailed selection, a uh, more accurate selection rather. And I will show you how to use the pen tool in a future video. A lot of people are scared of it, but it's a bit silly really, and there's nothing to be afraid of. I'll hold your hand and guide you through it. <laughs> um, seriously bro, the last video got almost 5,000 views, and it's been ages since I've made a Photoshop video. So I came back and saw the statistics, and over the last month I've been getting quite a few messages in my inbox, and a few subscribers as well. So I decided, alright, people are actually watching these and they must be finding them helpful, so I decided that I'd make some more. And one thing that is very relevant to color replacement and contrast replacement is choosing the colors to use in the first place. So I just recently had to make my band website from the ground up and I had done absolutely no web design for quite some time. I was completely stumped at first with the colors, but I came across some very helpful charts that explained which colors represent what moods and how to apply them well. I found these to be absolutely invaluable, so I'd quite like to make a video that goes over those charts and also select a few websites that I like the look of to use as examples with this. So if it interests you, just look out for that in the next few weeks time. So I will see you then, but as for now, I'm off to get wasted.